The Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company. In just a moment, the Great Gildersleeve. But first... Here's important news for you from the makers of Kraft Quality Foods. Tonight, we're making the first announcement on this program of a wonderful new product brought to you by Kraft. Yes, a brand new member of the Kraft family of fine foods. At this point, we're not even going to tell you what the new product is. We're saving that for our next announcement. But be sure to keep tuned to this program. Listen for the big news from Kraft in just a few minutes. Now, the great Gildersleeve. Let's see what's going on in Summerfield. I don't know about the rest of the town, but things are pretty quiet in the water department this afternoon. Our worthy water commissioner has dismissed his secretary for the day, and with feet comfortably propped on his office desk, he's engrossed in the page of the Summerfield Indicator, the society page, no less. Yeah. Orkney, Pilhauser nuptials announced. Who cares about that? Bessie Clooney weds Oren Stack in double ring ceremony. Yeah, she'll have a ring on him, all right, right in his nose. <laughs> well, here it is. Marjorie and Walter J. Thompson to celebrate first wedding anniversary tomorrow. Yeah, let's see if they gave the kids a good write-up. Marjorie is the niece of Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve, popular Summerfield Water Commissioner. You what a fine little newspaper. <laughs> Walter Thompson, known to his friends as Bronco, is the... Anybody in? Oh, come in, Judge. Well, I find the commissioner reading a newspaper. A financial page, no doubt. What are you looking for, Gildy? Watered stock? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, someday that old goat's going to lay an egg. What was that, Gildy? Yeah, I said, uh, take off your coat and rest your legs. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I was just reading in the indicator about Marjorie and Bronco. You know, they're celebrating their first wedding anniversary tomorrow. I know, Gilday. That's why I stopped in. I brought a little gift for you to take home to the children. Well, nice. I made it myself. You did? Salt and pepper shakers. I read in a magazine how to make them out of two spools. Well, that's very thoughtful of you. <laughs> Marjorie and Bronco will appreciate it. Just imagine. They've been married a whole year. How time flies. Yeah. Seems only yesterday I was driving Marjorie to the church. And what a happy marriage it has been. Over the turbulent sea of matrimony, their little ship has sailed steady and true. Judge. Undaunted by wind and wave. Judge. Guided always toward the rainbow by the shining light of the love in their hearts. Judge, what's the matter? I brought myself to tears. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You know, of course, Marjorie and Bronco are happy, Judge. They've done very well in their first year of married life. Indeed, they have. And I'll tell you why they've gotten along so well. I can take some of the credit for that myself. Oh? You bet. They've been happy simply because I never meddle in their affairs. They live in my house, but I let them live their own lives. I never tell them what to do. You're very wise, Gilda. Well, so are you, Judge. My policy with Marjorie and Bronco is strictly hands-off. I mind my own business. I'm yes, most... sir. A most commendable attitude. Uh, four o'clock. Excuse me, Judge. I've got to get home. What's your hurry, Gilda? Yeah, I've got to help Bronco and Marjorie with their plans for tomorrow. First anniversary. I thought you didn't meddle in their affairs. Well, this isn't meddling. It's helping. They've never had a wedding anniversary before. Have you? Never mind. <laughs> That's a swell idea for tomorrow, Marge. It'll be like having our wedding all over again. Yeah, only with no people. There'll be just you and I, Bronco and the minister. I know Mr. Foley will open the church for us. Sure. It'll be our day all to ourselves. Where should we go? Oh, I don't care, Marge. As long as you're with me. Hello, everybody. I'm home. Is 
that, Unky? Marjorie, Bronco. Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, you're home early, Uncle Mort. What happened? Yeah, nothing. I simply closed up the office. Tomorrow's the big day, kiddies. Lots of things to do. Big story in the paper about your anniversary. I bought ten copies. Marge has a great idea, Mr. Gildersleeve. Bronco and I are going to be married all over again, Unky. Married again? Isn't once enough? <laughs> It's a sentimental thing, Mr. Gildersleeve. Lots of people do it, Unky. We're going to reaffirm our marriage vows. We'll have the church all to ourselves. They'll only be the minister. Well, say, by George, that's a great idea. A whole wedding, just like the first one. But without the people. Oh, you have to have people at a wedding. Even an anniversary wedding. That's the best part of it. But, Unky, we were planning... Yeah, everybody will come and bring presents. Yeah, I'll wear my tuxedo. We'll have it right here in the living room, and we'll have a big party afterwards. Yeah, but Mr. Gildersleeve... I'll get ice cream tonight from Peavy's, and Bertie will bake the wedding cake, and we'll put one candle on it. But, Unky... No, oh, don't you kiddies worry about a thing. I'll handle all the details. There isn't much time, but I'll manage it. Uncle Moore... Yeah, when is this time to get a story in the paper? You have to get Bertie started on the cake, invite the guests. Yeah, it's a lucky thing for the kids. I'm an executive. I can make things hum. Where's Leroy? Leroy! <laughs> I've been looking all over the neighborhood for you. What happened? What's the rush? Yeah, we got a lot of things to do, and you've got to help. Marjorie and Bronco's anniversary tomorrow. Oh, for corn's sake. They've been married one year. Big deal. <laughs> well, this is a big deal. We're going to have a wedding at the house. Who's getting married? You, Marjorie and Bronco. Again? Holy cow, is that the way marriage is? You have to renew it every year like a magazine subscription? <laughs> Leroy, this is a sentimental thing. It's a beautiful idea. They're going through the ceremony again to reaffirm their vows. To re who their what? <laughs> Never mind. Get a move on. We have very little time. This is the daffiest idea I ever heard of. What do I have to do? Yeah, first of all, I want you to run down to the cleaners with my tuxedo. Have it steamed and pressed. And on the way back, stop in at your piano teacher's. Tell her instead of giving you a lesson tomorrow, we'd like to have her play the wedding march. And then get to Floyd's Barbershop fast and get a haircut. Have you got that? March the tuxedo, steam the piano, teacher, take Floyd to the cleaner. <laughs> Bertie! Yo, Bertie! Yes, sir? Uh, give Leroy my tuxedo, will you? Your tuxedo? It ain't gonna fit him. Well, he's taking it to the cleaners, Bertie, to have it pressed. Yeah, I'm in a big hurry. You going out tonight, Miss Gilsey? No, Bertie, this is for tomorrow, the wedding. Wedding? Where? Here. Here? You, Bertie, please, don't stand in the doorway. I have to telephone. Invite the guests. Call the minister. Yes, sir. Wedding? Here? Tomorrow? You better call the minister first. Right, George, it's a good thing I'm here to do these things for the kiddies. It takes an older head to get things organized. Yeah, I'm phoning, Bertie. Very busy. What is it? I'm not hearing so good lately. Did you say we're going to have a wedding tomorrow? Yes, Bertie. Anybody we know? Yeah, of course. Marjorie and Bronco. Oh, Miss Marjorie Bron Who? <laughs> yes. Bertie, I'll explain later. Yes. Hello? You Reverend Foley? Yes. This is Throckmorton B. Gildersleeve. How are you, Mr. Gildersleeve? Oh, fine. Very well, thank you. Reverend Foley, are you busy tomorrow in the afternoon, about 2 o'clock? No, I don't believe so. Why do you ask, Mr. Gildersleeve? Well, you know my niece, Marjorie, and her husband? Yes, I married them just about a year ago. Yeah, that's right. Well, they have a lovely idea. They'd like to be married again tomorrow on their anniversary to reaffirm their vows. That's a nice thought. I'll be glad to repeat the ceremony. Where is it being held, Mr. Gildersleeve? Unky. Excuse me, Reverend. What is it, Marjorie? You mustn't do all this, Uncle Moore. You know what I want to, my dear. Just leave everything to me. Oh, I know, but... Hello, Reverend Foley. Is this Gildersleeve again? Yes. Uh, thank you for offering your services. The ceremony will be here at my house, 2 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. I'll be there. Fine. Goodbye, Reverend. Goodbye. Well, I've got the wheels turning now. Really, Uncle Mort, Bronco and I had planned... Well, now you don't have to plan. I've taken over all the arrangements. I have broad shoulders. Yes, but... It's nothing. Happy to do it. After all, I'm your uncle. 
It's the least I can do on your first wedding anniversary. Oh, the twins are waking up. I'll get them, Miss Marjorie. Never mind, Bertie. I'll take care of them. Oh, there now, little darling. It's all wrong. Yeah, let's see. <laughs> yeah, let me see. I have to make out a list of the guests. I don't know. Mr. Gillsleeve. Yeah, what is it, Bertie? I could have sworn you said Miss Marjorie and Mr. Bronco are going to get married tomorrow. Well, that's exactly what I said, Bertie. It's their first anniversary. And they're going through the ceremony again, just for sentimental reasons. Oh, well, that's the nicest thing I ever heard. It's partly my idea. Yeah, I'm making all the arrangements. We going to the church just like before? No, it's going to be here at the house. There'll be guests and a minister, the wedding march, the whole thing. Land alive. And we'll need a wedding cake and extra plates and more chairs. Oh, you leave it to Bertie. I'll take care of everything. <laughs> We're going to have a wedding right here now. Oh, boy, we're going to have a wedding. Yeah, good old Bertie. She'll go all out. Hey, Oop. Leroy, haven't you gone yet? You must have spilled soup on your tuxedo skirt. It's all stiff. <laughs> well, that's the way it's supposed to be. Leave that shirt alone. Miss Kelsey, you want chocolate cake or angel cake? It's a wedding, Bertie. Angel cake. No, Leroy, just take the suit. Uh, Mr. Gildersleeve. Huh? You, oh, oh, Bronco. Yeah, I'm so busy getting things organized for tomorrow, I didn't see you. You want me to pick up the ice cream, Mr. Gildersleeve? Yeah, well, I'll get the ice cream, Bertie. Mr. Gildersleeve. How about your shoes? I'll see if you shine. You can shine them when you come back. Oh, me? <laughs> How many people coming to the west, Mr. Gildersleeve? Yeah, 30 or 40. 30 or 40? You certainly, my dear. The more, the merrier. Mr. Gildersleeve, Marge and I had sort Well, of... if you want more, just give me the names. We'll put chairs out on the lawn, open the front windows so they can hear. Unky, you don't... No, Marge, you're not imposing on me. Organizing things is my business. This is going to be a beautiful wedding anniversary, probably even bigger than your first one. Gildersleeve, I don't know how you do it, but you just have a way of making people happy. <laughs> Great Gildersleeve returns in just a moment. And now, here's the news we promised you. Big news from Kraft. It's our first announcement on this program of a wonderful new salad oil. Kraft salad oil. The first salad oil ever offered for your home use by the makers of all those wonderful Kraft prepared salad dressings. Now, you know that there are some salad dressings that no one else makes quite like you. You know, too, that many of your prized cooking and baking recipes call for liquid shortening. You also know that for best results, you must use only the best ingredients. And that's why the introduction of Kraft Salad Oil is the most exciting kitchen news in years. For Kraft Salad Oil is more than just a new oil. It's a new kind of oil. It's fresh and pure as summer sunshine. Lighter bodied, too. Because Kraft Salad Oil is not just refined, it's superfined. It's produced by a special new superfining process created by Kraft. Because it's lighter bodied, it blends quickly and perfectly with other ingredients in your salad dressings. Adds crusty tenderness to things you fry. Heavenly fluffiness and moistness to things you bake. Yes, you'll put new magic into your finest recipes with new superfined Kraft Salad Oil. Try it tomorrow, won't you? Look for the bottle with the beautiful label. Get Kraft Salad Oil at your grocer's. Well, the great Gildersleeve is a man of action. When Marjorie and Bronco mentioned the idea of repeating the marriage ceremony on their first wedding anniversary, the great man stepped in and took over. The plan now is for a huge wedding and anniversary party at the water commissioner's house tomorrow. Uh, how do Marjorie and Bronco feel about all this? Well, it's not what they had in mind. Yeah, Gildersleeve, you've got things running like clockwork. Cake in the oven, guests invited, tuxedo at the cleaners, I hope. You know, all I have to do now is stop into Peavy's, order the ice cream, and everything will be all set. 
Hello, Phoebe. Yeah, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> what can I do for you this evening? Oh, plenty, Phoebe. I want about a gallon of ice cream. A gallon? You want to take it along or eat it here? <laughs> I'm not going to eat it any place, Phoebe. This is for the wedding party tomorrow at my house. Wedding at your house? You bet. Your line was busy, so I called Mrs. Peavy. You're both invited. Well, whose wedding is it, Mr. Gildersleeve? Rocco and Marjorie. I thought it'd be a fine idea if they celebrated their first anniversary by going through the ceremony again. Minister and everything. My, my. It's a sweet, sentimental idea. Why, I'll bet you'd like to do it yourself, Peavy. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Oh, when you see the wedding party tomorrow. A whole house full of people. Cake, wedding march. This is going to be the high point of the social season. And I'm arranging it. Uh, Marjorie and Bronco like the idea, do they? Like the idea? Why, of course they do. Naturally, they're holding back a little. Don't want to impose on me. And I can tell you they're both tickled to death that I'm doing it. What made you ask, Petey? Well, most married people kind of like to get away on their anniversary. I know Mrs. Peavy and I do. You do? On our last anniversary, Mrs. Peavy went to Omaha and I went to Kansas City. <laughs> Fine anniversary. Yes, it was. <laughs> Funny thing, we, we were glad to see each other when we got back. It surprised both of us. <laughs> well, this is different, Peavy. Our family likes to stay together. We like friends. The house will be jumping tomorrow. All right. Mrs. Peavy and I'll be there. Fine, Peavy. We'll just sit while you jump. <laughs> uh, see you tomorrow, Peavy. Marjorie! Bronco! It's all set. Everything's arranged. Talk to you. Now, my dear, don't say I shouldn't have done it. This was my idea. You... Now, hold still and let me talk. You haven't let me say a word since you started all this. Well, you know you don't have to thank me. Uncle Mort, Bronco and I appreciate what you're trying to do for our anniversary, and I hate to spoil it all, but we don't want a party. Marjorie, of course you do. No, I don't. Neither does Bronco. We were going to the church, just the two of us, and then have a quiet day all to ourselves. And Marjorie. No, Unky. I'm sorry you got yourself into this. I didn't want to hurt your feelings. But now I'm saying no big wedding here at the house. But... No big party. But... Absolutely no, and that's final. She means it. <laughs> oh, brother. Now I'll have to call the whole thing off. You're so suppressed, Doc. I got a haircut and I talked to my piano teacher. It's okay for the wedding march. Yeah, you better go back and tell your piano teacher it's all off. What? Yeah. Marjorie put her foot down. No wedding party. Heck, I can cancel the piano teacher, but I got a haircut for nothing. <laughs> yeah, that's life, my boy. Now I have to call Reverend Foley and tell him it's all off. I hate women. <laughs> Hello? Reverend Foley? Yes? This is Gildersleeve again. Yes, Mr. Gildersleeve. Bad news, Reverend. Marjorie and Bronco changed their plans. I guess we won't need you tomorrow. Oh, well, I'm sorry. They'll probably stop by the church for the ceremony. They want to be alone. I understand, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah, thank you. Goodbye, Reverend. Goodbye. Yeah, darn kids, anyway. What's the matter, Mr. Gildersleeve? Leroy says you're down here crying. Yeah, I'm not crying. Look, Mr. Gildersleeve... If you've made all these plans, I think we should go through with them. You think we should... What's this? Marge is a little upset, but she'll be all right. You go ahead and plan the ceremony and the party. Well, sure. Rocco, you have a level head on your shoulders. Well, I know Marge, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah, of course you do. Leroy! Yeah! Don't cancel the piano, teacher. The party's on again. Oh, brother! <laughs> <laughs> you go up and talk to Marjorie Bronco. I'll call Reverend Foley. Sure. It's going to be all right. Sure. Hello. Reverend Foley? Yes? Gildersleeve again. Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. 
Good news, Reverend Foley. Oh? Yes, the children changed their minds again. The ceremony and wedding party will be here as scheduled, 2 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Are you sure? Oh, yes. I just got the word. See you tomorrow, Reverend Foley. Very well. Goodbye. Oh, what a relief. Good old Bronco. And Marjorie will enjoy it. She likes people. Uncle Mort. Huh? Now, Marge, Mr. Gildersleeve was only trying to help. This is our anniversary, Unky. We don't want a big crowd of people. You and Marjorie Bronco said... Your uncle's gone to all this trouble, Marge. Whose side are you on, Bronco? Mine or Uncle Mort? Oh, boy, it's a battle. <laughs> you keep out of this. After all, Marge, it won't be so bad. I don't want an anniversary that isn't so bad. We've been planning on this, just you and I. No, Margie, listen. You keep out of this. <laughs> That's telling them, Marge. <laughs> yeah, but Marge... You go on, have your party. As for you, Bronco Thompson, you and the minister can just stand there and wait. I'm not going to marry you. Yeah, what? <laughs> and <that's fine. laughs> Oh, my goodness. I guess I said the wrong thing. They've been married a year. It's their first anniversary, and now she isn't going to marry him. <laughs> I don't get it. You run along, Leroy. You too, Bronco. Oh. <laughs> Reverend Foley. Yes? This is Gildersleeve again. <laughs> you know, I wish Bronco and Marjorie could have taken a walk with me. Moon's coming up. They might have smoothed everything over. Well... Maybe they'd patch up their differences while I was out. They couldn't still be mad at each other. Yeah, I wonder. Marjorie! Bronco! There's no answer. Hey, Unc, have you seen Marge and Bronco? Aren't they here? Heck no. Bertie's taking care of the twins. Bronco stormed out and pretty soon old Marge went out. They just disappeared. Well, they'll be back. You uh, go read a book or something. What an uproar. Oh, dear. Yeah, I think I'll lie down on the couch. <laughs> Gildersleeve, you're a meddler. You and your big ideas. You've probably broken up their whole marriage. Both gone, not speaking to each other. On the day before their wedding anniversary. Gildersleeve, I hate you. <laughs> they started out so happily. It was just a year ago. I'll never forget. What a beautiful wedding. As thou have this woman to thy wedded wife, who live together after God's ordinance in the holy state of matrimony, wilt thou love her, comfort her, honor and keep her in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, keep thee only unto her, so long as ye both shall live. I will. Marjorie, wilt thou have this man to thy wedded husband to live together after God's ordinance in the holy state of matrimony? Wilt thou love him, comfort him, honor, and keep him in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, keep thee only unto him so long as ye both shall live, I will. Yeah, just a year ago, what have I done? For as much as Walter and Marjorie have consented together in holy wedlock and have witnessed the same... Where's that? Telephone in church? He was ringing that. Telephone, Archie! Yeah, what happened? Yeah, I must have dreamed. You're getting the phone, Bertie. I got it. It's Gildy, best man. Dad? Oh, really? Good, I'll tell it. Happy anniversary. Goodbye. 
You was that birdie? That was Miss Marjorie. Marjorie? Where is she? She and Mr. Bronco are over at Reverend Foley's house. Reverend Foley? They said their love for you and they'll be home tomorrow. Oh, what a relief. Why did they dash out of the house while I was gone? Well, that was the only thing to do, Mr. Gillsleeve, with all the outside help they was getting. You know what they did? You know what, Bertie? They eloped. <laughs> eloped? <laughs> well, good for them. <laughs> Oop. They're the twins. Heat the milk. Man the bottles. Oh, what a fine first anniversary. <laughs> Great Gildersleeve will be right back. Don't forget marvelous new Kraft salad oil. First salad oil for home use ever offered by Kraft is on sale now at your grocer's. Use this new super-fined, lighter-bodied oil for those wonderful homemade salad dressings that no one else can make quite like you. Use it in those wonderful chiffon cakes you take such pride in. Use it in all your cooking or baking recipes that call for liquid shortening. Get Kraft salad oil in either the pint or quart bottle tomorrow at your grocer's. Look for the bottle with the beautiful label. Hey, Unc, what happened last night? Uh, nothing, Leroy. Marjorie and Bronco just decided it'd be fun to elope, that's all. It was their own idea. All I did was act as a... As a What's the word for it? Big pest? <laughs> no. I only did what I thought was right. And I'll tell you this, my boy. From now on, I'm going to say absolutely nothing. I'm going to be as tight-mouthed as a clam. Good for you, Hunk. Oh, somebody at the door. Yeah, I'll get it, Leroy. Morning, Gilda. Well, good morning, Judge. I stopped by, Gilda, to wish Marjorie and Bronco a happy first anniversary. Oh, thank you, Judge. But the kiddies aren't here. They eloped last night. Eloped? How romantic. Who ever thought of that? Well, in a way, it was my idea. <laughs> Your idea? You yeah, well. Going to say absolutely nothing. Going to be tight-lipped as a clam. Big deal. Leroy. <laughs> Gildersleeve is played by Willard Waterman. The show is written by Paul West, John Elliott, and Andy White, with music by Robert Armbruster. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Dick Crenna, Joe Forte, Lee Keel, Earl Ross, and Dick Legrand. This is John Heaston saying good night for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the great Gildersleeve. What's the difference between a sandwich that's really super and one that's merely good? Here's the answer, Kraft's prepared mustard. For when you add a little mustard to cold meats or cheese, you add a lot of tang. Hidden flavors pop right out. Every bite tastes better. There are two kinds of Kraft mustard, you know. Kraft salad mustard, mild and delicately spiced, and Kraft mustard with snappy horseradish added. Have both on hand for different tastes, different uses. With either kind, when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. Get Kraft's prepared mustard. Don't miss the Falcon each Sunday over the station. Check your newspaper for time of broadcast and listen next Sunday as the Falcon solves The Case of the Dutch Doll. <laughs> Laugh with Groucho. He's next on NBC.